Now, this is like, so the thing is that there are many arteries, there are many veins, there are many vessels. Thing is that, am I just going to go through every single vessel and point it out to you and will you learn from that? Probably not. The thing is about anatomy is that you just have to practice it on your own time. So what do, what will I test you on? What can be on the test? I think a good place to start is with these two images, like these overall big, easy, relatively easy to identify artery, major arteries and veins of the body. So here we have the arteries and I think anything from this list is fair game. So again, they're pretty, rel they're relatively big and they're easy to identify. If I do test you on them, like, and if it's the smaller ones, like these mesenteric ones, I'll try to zoom in as much as possible because in this zoomed out full body version, it's really hard to see. But for things like that are pretty easy to see from here, like the, the, the aorta or the brachial artery or some of these other ones, I might use a whole body image. And actually, this is also why if you look on the Lima, I also uploaded the Pearson version. So the Pearson version, it has a lot more lines and a lot more detail. But at the same time, I think if you want to really look at this detail and look how it's arranged compared to other structures in the body, that's where the it's kind of useful to use both. Like the OpenStax version is more like a cleaner, easier, more accessible version. But the Pearson version has more arteries, more veins and more detail. So I think it's kind of good to work from both. And I think this is also something I can work off from as well. This overall body image or the overall major systemic arteries in the Pearson version. Oh, and a big caveat, I put a warning on the Pearson version. Do not upload Pearson images to public sites, especially for profit sites. Like I've heard of horror stories of students getting subpoenaed or having something, some sort of official letter from Pearson because they do have a legal team. And the thing is that those La Lima images are only for our class. So again, they're only supposed to stay on La Lima. Do not redistribute them anywhere else. So keep them for us. All right, so what we have here, major systemic arteries. And again, this is something also in that file I uploaded. So it's all up there. And here, the great thing about the arteries and veins is that typically, now not always, arteries and veins kind of run alongside each other. So typically, if there is one version of an artery, so if like you have a, so you have like a subclavian artery, you have a subclavian vein. And these arteries and veins come in pairs. Typically, sometimes there are exceptions, but a lot of these, like you not only have like a pair of artery and vein, you also have a pair of left and right. So the good thing is that by knowing some of these arteries and veins and the key words, you kind of, you know the left and right if there exists. And there are exceptions, but the exceptions are fewer than there are the rules. And here's the systemic veins. Again, I think these two images, this is a good place to start. I definitely, could, I definitely can draw, if I test you on the anatomy of these veins, these are a good place to start. And I think this is a fair list of veins. Now, I can't test you on all the veins in the body because that is a lot. If you're going to maybe like, if you're going to be a radio tech or a phlebotomist, yeah, you probably need to know more arteries and veins. And But compared at this level, I think just starting with the major ones that are easy to identify and that carry blood from like, especially the ones that lead to and from your heart and the closer they are to your, your cardiac circulation, so basically, the closer they are to the heart, the more likely I'm going to test on it because these are easier to identify and they carry a lot of blood, to put it very, very, in very scientific terms. So again, this is just looking at it more in depth. Now, notice in that pre previous picture, now, is, are those only the, are those major overall body views the only ones I'm going to test you on? Well, if you look at this, what's a major part of the body that's not labeled in this diagram? Notice that up here is not being labeled. And why? Because there are many, many vessels that supply the, the head and brain and neck with blood and drain from the head, neck, and brain. So what we have here is just a sample of it. Here we, are, we have major arteries. And as you can see, there are not only are there many arteries that supply the head and brain, they're very big. Because again, why? Well, your brain needs a lot of oxygen. It consumes a lot of nutrients and glucose. Therefore, it needs a very adequate, it needs a lot of blood. 
And here is a little more simplistic view. I think this is definitely a list I can expect from all of you. And what do you notice? Well, thing, notice that some of these are named like the maxillary, occipital. Hey, what does that sound like? That sounds like bones, right? So if you remember, we're here last semester and you remember the, the bones of the skull. Some of these arteries and veins are named directly after bones. And then the like superficial temporal, we have a temporal bone and superficial is an anatomical direction. Then facial, it well, refers to the face and lingual, that refers to the tongue, right? So lingual means tongue. So sometimes it's not necessarily bone, but some, maybe an anatomical landmark. And then here is something very interesting. So what we're looking at is the brain, but the inferior surface of the brain. So if say you took someone's brain and turned it up this way, this is what you're looking at. So what we're looking at is the bottom of the brain, and this is what we call the cerebral arterial circle. And I make a big deal of this because why? Well, the, another common name for the cerebral arterial circle is the circle of Willis. So especially for people who study neurology or radiology, this is a very important landmark. And not only that, remember your brain needs a lot of blood, oxygen, and nutrients. So it makes sense that you would have a very elaborate network of blood that supplies the brain. And this is the OpenStax version, so it's a little more easier and accessible. I wish anatomy was this easy and cartoony, but in the real person, real people, it's not like that. But I think you can see the circle a little better with this. And one interesting thing is that in many of these arteries and veins, they branch out, but they don't kind of like form these loops or fuse in with each other. Well, the circle of Willis or the cerebral arterial circle is an exception. So it has a lot of what we call anastomoses or singular anastomosis. So basically it's a connection between these, at least in the circulatory system. It's a natural connection and there are pathological ones, but don't worry about it for this class. But for natural anastomoses is that there are connections between nearby blood vessels. And what we have here is like, if we just had blood vessels branch, these wouldn't be connected. But these things like the anterior communicating arteries, they actually form a bridge between the left and right subset of vessels that supply the brain. So this is why we have that circle of Willis and that's why it's a little special. Not only does it connect, but it also kind of provides backup routes. So if say one of these vessels gets damaged or it worse a clot, well, the thing is that if you have an alternate route to supply blood to that area, that's kind of like a backup area to maintain perfusion and blood supply to that area, even if one of these routes are cut off. And then again, many arteries that su supply the brain and many veins that drain it. So, And that's another interesting thing. Some of these veins, in the, the especially when it, you reach the brain and the head and neck, they're called sinuses. So sinus, if you were here last semester, you might remember the sinuses in your skull, the little pockets of air inside your, in some, some of your bones. But this one is a different use of the same word. So whenever you have a sinus, think of it as a large vein, but it's collecting a lot of the blood from, from tissues. So this is what we have here with sciences. Now, do I expect you to know all of these? I would focus more on the open stacks picture because again, there are a lot of sinuses. There are a lot of vessels that lead to and from your head and brain. But what I'm getting at here is that it's not only important to supply the brain, it's also important to drain blood and liquid from your brain. So you maintain an appropriate volume of liquid and fluid in your brain, brain and skull. So you don't have increased pressure in your brain. So yeah, and again, innominate, that nasty term, or that, that, that silly term. I mean, actually, if you look at Gray's Anatomy, I think they use innominate. But just letting you know that brachiocephalic is the same thing as innominate. It's not innominate anymore. It's not no name. It has a name. It's brachiocephalic. But yeah, I think the, yeah, so the open sax version is a little more accessible with the anatomy. Again, Pointing out these veins one by one won't help you in terms of studying. What I do, did when I started studying this is, well, I actually used the anatomy coloring book. That was my main way of studying these arteries and veins. But what you can do is cover up these labels and then test yourself by removing these labels and saying, like, can I name this without seeing what it's labeled and without the text there in front of me? 
again, just showing more of the brain. So again, in those overall body pictures, you don't see all the arteries and veins in the head and neck and brain because why? There will be way too many lines poking into the various parts of the skull and brain. So this is what you should study for anatomy. So a lot of this anatomy stuff, you have to kind of like study on your own. And that's why I uploaded that file with all those images. Why? Because I want you to start learning them now. Because the more you're exposed to it, the more it stays in your brain. So again, you, this is just something you have to practice. I mean, I think there's no way around it. Unless you're somebody who's blessed with a full tap photographic memory, you aren't going to get it the first time. I didn't get it the first time. You just have to practice and naming these. But the thing is that, is this like, okay, are you learning from completely from scratch? Well, the great thing news is that many of these are named after landmarks. So things like the popliteal vessels, they're named after the back of the knee. And what also you have is like things like anatomical directions, like we had superficial temporal that refers to it being more superficial and outer and then bones. So again, many bones are like things like your radial and ulnar vessels. They're named after radius and ulna and nearby organs as well. And sometimes these organs have different names for them. Like when you talk about renal, that refers to the kidney. So it's not the kidney artery. They call it the re renal artery. So renal equals kidney. But the thing is that if you kind of review these or do you remember, you remember, knew them at one time, but then you kind of forgot them, it's good to refresh them because now if you kind of know where these directions, these bones, these organs are, that saves you a lot of time in kind of like zooming in and saying, okay, well, if it's a radial artery, it must be in the forearm somewhere. And that already get zooms in versus like if you had to try to find the radial artery somewhere in the entire body. And anatomy coloring book. So if you hopefully you kept yours if you did buy one last year. I don't require it, but at least for some people and at least for me, it really helped in get getting a better idea, especially since like these images, they just have like these lines going to it. But the great thing about the anatomy coloring book is that it has you trace the whole vessel. It's not just saying like this point right here is this artery, this point right here is this vein. It actually traces it, how has you trace the whole vessel rather, rather than just looking at one part of a vessel.